We'll start the evening with a cutting competition using sharp swords. Uh, our host, Carl Rebar, will interview Sean Franklin, who's running the tournament. Over to you, Carl. So, what will you be doing tonight in the cutting? Okay, so this is the third stage of the cutting competition. We've had two before this. Um, it's a cumulative competition. Um, the first stage was uh, simple cuts, um, kind of thin the herd, so to speak. Um, the second stage was a little more dynamic. Um, a common criticism of cutting is it's too static. Uh, so we had fencers reacting to prompts, having to move, have to cut on command to simulate um, a fencing match a little more and see if they could apply their skills in that context. Now we're back to more static to focus on core fundamentals. So this is the parallel mat cutting. We see two mats beside each other, and the competitor must cut a clean line through both. They will be evaluated not just on if they can do it, but how they performed it. So if, even if you get through the mat and pieces go flying, or you're throwing your body off balance, or the, the plane is not good, those cuts won't be counted or will be deducted. So it's very important how you get through the tatami, not just how how we, that you've done it. Okay, thank you. Good luck with this. Thank you for having me. And the judges are Sean Franklin, as we saw, and Jane Johnston of Blood and Iron. Surely you'll see our host of the evening, Hannes Traude. Stepping into the ring, he'll be our announcer tonight. Good evening, Sotters. We will begin with the sharp cutting finals. So we have three finalists in this tournament, and they are Aaron Klonauta, Tears Cool, and Christian Raukinen. Two Europeans and one American. Aaron Carnuta is from the Denver Historical Fencing Academy. Thies Kuhl is from HVN in the Netherlands. And Christian Rukonen is from EHMS and in Finland. Please welcome the first yeah. cutter this evening. It is from the Denver Historical Fencing Academy in the United States of America, Aaron Carnuta. So you'll see all the competitors are using the Alexandria sword. So we have our first cut right over how from Aaron Carnuta. It looks like a pretty clean cut, went through both. Uh, it looks from where I sit like it did a pretty good job of maintaining an even angle. Jane Johnston is using a fader to measure the uh, the line there to, to check out the line, the plane, and the, they will uh, judge it accordingly. They're turning it around so they can get a cut now from the other angle. So this, I believe, is going to be a left, uh, left overhaul. All right. Looks like a pretty clean cut. Clean blow, severed both tatami. Jane Johnston is measuring that plane. And the sword you see Aaron using is the uh, Albion Alexandria. And all three competitors will be using the same sword. Um, and that's by coincidence. Uh, every competitor will enter the tournament with their own blade of choice. All right, so ah. what we saw is a right Unterhau, and he made it through one, but... Uh, he lost momentum and did not make it through the second tatami. So that obviously is a flaw, a fault that's going to uh, count against him. So then you'll see that the tatami are now going to be flipped around, and he will do the, his final cut of the evening, and that is going to be uh, that will be a left unterhau. Yeah, it's it's interesting, you know, in watching these cutting competitions, it's. Uh, when you're when you're in a fencing ring, uh, you have other people to blame. You know, you have an opponent. Oop. All right. So the first Unterhau went through cleanly. The second did not. Caught the tatami, carried it off of the spike. Uh, so that too will be a, a flaw. 
So, yeah, what I was saying was the, uh, what's interesting is when you're in a fencing competition, of course, there are two people involved, and you don't control a lot of the, uh, a lot of the variables there. But the interesting thing about a cutting competition is you literally have nobody to blame but yourself. And it's interesting to watch the faces of the competitors sometimes because you can see them uh, wincing when they make the cut. In a fencing tournament, uh, you know, a, a competitor will never show or she will never show weakness so that she'll acknowledge that she did wrong. Or it's hidden it by their fencing mask. It's hidden by the fencing mask to sort of to, to influence the judges as little as possible in, in a negative way. But it's, it's sort of hard not to do that test cutting. It's, it's All right, so our next competitor is Thies Kuhl from the Netherlands uh, from HVN. He will be fighting later tonight uh, in, for, in the open longsword for bronze. He's cool, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right, so he's made his right overall. Looked like there might have been a little issue. And you see him cutting as high as possible, so it will allow him to keep as much of the tatami as, yeah, as he can. Yeah, it's true. Yes, execute four cuts on those two tatami. And if you go if you go in a comfortable middle range, then you'll have less and less tatami towards the end of your of your uh, of your full of your blows. Right. So now we have the left overhaul. Taking a moment to reflect, gain his composure. Nice, right. nice, Very clean nice. cut. Jane Johnston measuring. The next cut will be the right. Hunter how? I'm sorry. I think it's gonna be the. It's, I think it's gonna be the left Hunter how there. That's what it looks like. Beautiful, oh, beautiful cut. That's a beautiful cut. Beautiful clean cut. It's, it's interesting. There's a there's a little bit of controversy over cutting and its place in HEMA and, and the value of that. Uh, I think uh, certainly in North America, the view is very strong that it's highly relevant and uh, should be a, a critical part of what we do in HEMA. There are some voices. Oh, ah. Okay, so we saw that right, Winter Howe. Uh, it went through the first one. Did not make it through the second one. Lost, lost momentum. The same cut Aaron struggled with. Right. The right Unterhau. Right. Or was it the left Unterhau? No, it was the right no. Unterhau. That, uh so, Matt, tell us about the mats they're using, the tatamis. What are they and, and what are their history? Right. So, essentially, it's a... It's basically a, a straw mat. Uh, this is a type of mat that is used in Japan for flooring. Uh, but uh, these are mats that are rolled up and then they're soaked overnight. So, uh, you know, so they're heavy and they have a, a consistency that is, um, you know, some say approximating human flesh. But uh, the bottom line is it, it gives you a lot of good feedback uh, on the trajectory of your cut. So you can examine the surface of the tatami and see whether the plane of your cut is flat and even or whether it's curved or other, otherwise deformed, which is indicative of bad form while cutting. So now we have Christian Rukonen. 
from EHMS in Finland. Uh, from EHMS in Finland, Christian Rukkonen. That's interesting because both T's Cool and Christian Rukkonen have been uh, two of the people who have really, really um, stepped up and, and then started practicing cutting here in Europe. Beautiful, wow. beautiful right beautiful. over how by Christian Rukkonen. Nice, clean. I think that's I think that's the cleanest one we've seen today. All right, map being turned around. And now we're going to get that left over home. A little less clean, uh, more of a flatter angle. But it looks like uh, he certainly severed both of them. We'll see what the plane is of the cut. Here we have a replay of that. So you see that uh, one of the pieces actually flew sort of a long way. The idea is uh, uh, when cutting, the pieces of tatami should fall as close as possible. That's indicative of a nice, clean cut uh, that's continuing in a straight plane. All right, so we had that left unterhau, and as with some of our prior competitors, he cut through the one, got tangled up in the other. All right, they're writing the stand replacing the tatami. They're going to turn it around, and he is going to do that uh, right unterhau. Final cut of the evening. Boom! There he goes. I think he may get a little deduction on that for uh, for deviating offline, uh, maybe over committing a bit with his body. But I think knowing Christian, he was a little pissed <laughs> <laughs> and wanted to make it convincing. See ya. <laughs> However, that may that will probably count against him, from what I understand from talking to Sean about. Uh, you know, he, he talked about, uh, you know, when, when, you're, when you're making these cuts, you don't want to overcommit. You don't want to, uh, when you're making the, the downwards cuts, you don't want to overcommit that shoulder. Likewise, when you're making the, the uh, upwards one, you don't want to carry too far offline. Christian did a little bit of that, uh, so, and so that's, that is a fault. So while we're, Sean is determining the winner here, this, this, this final, it, how can you train shop cutting without using it to Tommy? Well, it's interesting. You know, I've, I've spent a fair amount of time talking to Mike Adelson and, and Tristan Sukowski about this, and what they say is that to ta cutting to Tommy is not actually where you learn to cut. It's, it's practicing your cuts uh, in the air and with good form, and one of the, one of the things they, they tell you is that, you know, you make these whistling cuts, and if your edge alignment is right, you will hear it, and, and certainly that, uh, you know, from uh, listening to them and, and working on my own form, uh, it, it's actually an interesting way of practice because it, uh, you know, I found I had an edge alignment problem on one of my cuts, and it was that diagnostic that helped me. So, again, tatami by itself is, is not the be-all and the end-all. One of the things that's interesting, I'll just say this, is that, you know, Carl Rearberg said, do we really need an American, North American, to come over and teach us Europeans how to cut. And frankly, from my point of view, with respect to Carl, I'd say yes. I mean, this is one of those areas where I think North America is way ahead of the game, way ahead of Europe. I'm, I'm often quoted as saying I think that uh, uh, sometimes Europe Europe is, is a couple of years ahead of the East Coast, and sometimes the East Coast is, is ahead of the West Coast. But uh, this is one area where I think the United States and Canada are way ahead uh, of Europe. Europe, time to catch up. 
But this is a nice display of, of cutting by uh, an American and uh, two European fencers. Uh, you hear the crowd going crazy in the background. That's our uh, iconic uh, floor sweeper right there. It's just become a, a sort of tradition here at, uh, at Swordfish to, <laughs> to cheer on the to cheer on the floor sweeper. We are going to start with the medals for the cutting finals and. The cutters don't even know yet who won, only me, only I do know. So if they please can come out. <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, Mikhail, I'm waiting for those who did the cutting. <laughs> yes? They are not competent, they must, they must show us a little bit. Can you vent that is your signal trade, what do you want to say? I'm sorry. So okay. So you have enter? Ah, it is uh, the four. Keep talking. Yeah, well, I keep talking. Um, <laughs> you know, bucklers, what are they about? I mean, it's... <laughs> who needs them? We can only have a sword tournament, I think. Like we did yesterday. Cutters are here? Good. Send them out, please. And applause for the cutters. Okay, you have no idea who won? Well, then I'll tell you. The bronze medal for the cutting finals this year go to Awan Kanuta. And now, the brothers-in-law. No, 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 no. It's only the scissor that cuts. The silver medal for the cutting finals go to Matisse Cool. And that, of course, concludes that the gold medal will be given to Mr. Christian Rikkonen. Well done, well done.